Hi, now we're going to continue with this trace drawing um, exercise to help you um, get more and more comfortable with using pen tool, pencil tool. I know when we first started working with Illustrator, we talked about open and closed objects, and we'll talk more about that again as we go forward with other projects in here. But this to me is one of the best ways for you to get a grasp of what all these tools inside of your pen tool collection, as well as your pencil tool, and a tool or two over here, even your curvature tool um, is a pretty awesome tool. It also is going to help you get comfortable still with your selection tool and your direct selection. Remember, direct selection is pretty amazing in that you can just select an anchor point or a few at the same time and manipulate those and not having to worry about when you select something with your selection tool that it selects everything. So you're able to pick things out that way as well. Um, you know, and also we've already played around with our shape tools, which, you know, our rectangle and things along those lines. Um, you may or may not use this depending on which of the images you chose to work on for this assignment. Um, but these are pretty much going to be the ones that we're going to work with um, as we go on and through this. I know a couple of you today, um, you wanted to take a line and break it because you were playing with the... Um, the width profiles and so I was actually able to show you the scissor tool which is if you click and hold on the eraser it's in here most likely most of you won't need that but um, you know if you come across something like that then reach out to me and then you know I can show it to you individually for certain so let's get started so we're gonna start with this and now what I have um, I've gone ahead and made a 9 by 9 uh, artboard again you know file new and then went through all that make certain that it's 300 ppi's and I'm completely okay with you if you wanted to do an 11 by 14. Um, if you're doing the fashion image, make certain that the 14 is the height, 11 would be the width. I'm okay with a 9 by 9. It was the last thing we worked with and it's came, what came up on my computer. So that's fine with me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run over here quickly and I'm going to take this amazing Alexander McQueen. I'm going to put it right in the center and let it loose. Wow. Okay. Well, what's happened is this image is way bigger than nine by nine. I think it's like 41 and something, and it is. Yeah, it's a little bit over 41 and a half inches. I don't need a 41 and a half inch document. So what I'm gonna do is change the size of my Alexander McQueen image to fit in my nine by nine. Well, obviously my image I'm working with, with my um, Alexander McQueen garment is not a square. So what I'm gonna do is come over here and find the one that's the larger of the two numbers and type in nine and then it, that way I know the height of it will be from the top to the bottom of my artboard then I'll have some space over here as you're going to see it's going to maintain my width and my height proportions why is it going to do this remember because it's highlighted um, and so you can do this hit enter and all of a sudden it is nine by six and so I'm going to take it hit V for my selection tool move it on in a little better and now I have it fitting in here the way I want it and it's something that I can actually manage. Um, with the artboard, if you don't want the white on the side of the artboard, um, what we can do is I'll introduce you to the artboard tool and all you have to do is click on this and what you can do is either come over here and type in, you want the height we already know is nine, we can type in, we want six inches over here. Manually as well, you can come over here and It'll snap to it. It's now five foot seven. So what I'm going to do is come over here and bring that in. And you'll notice over here now it is six by nine. I'm going to hit V, which is remember the shortcut for the selection tool. Now I'm ready to go. Now what's happened here is if I double click on this layer, I already have dim images to 50% um, on. So this is what it's going to look like coming in. So remember, go ahead and dim the image so you can see your line. Maybe not so much on this one because you don't have a lot of dark colors with it, but um, it's a good idea to dim the image that you're tracing. So I'm going to dim it. Um, I had mine at 65%. It's going to default to 50. You make the choice, whatever works best for you. Okay, so I'm going to hit enter or OK. And now the first thing you're going to do after you bring it in, after you get it into your document, either a 9x9 nine nine or like I said, something in the lines of 11x14, nothing bigger than that and nothing smaller than 9x9. Nine nine. So try to keep, keep that in mind as you um, make this board. I'm not, I'm not too particular about that. What I am particular about is the, um, 
is the line variation that you're going to use and how well you're using these tools. That's what this assignment is about. So I'm going to come over here and all I have to do now is lock it and add a new layer. So I'm just going to do drawing on this one and I'm ready to go. And I've already pulled off my pen tool and my pencil tool. So remember what you do is you click and hold, come over here to the far right and click that arrow and that will pull off that tool for you. When you're first learning, I think it's great to have this because it's at your access pretty quickly. Now what's going to happen depending on the image that you used, um, you know, you can use the pen tool, you can use the pencil tool. I'm in the pen tool now. So what I'm going to do is go over to properties and I want to make certain before you draw anything, this is what you should do. Once you grab the tool you're going to work with, pen or pencil, go over your properties, make sure your fill is none and make sure your stroke is on black. And so we have that going. Right now I'm going to start at one point, but you are going to definitely be changing your um, line weights as we work on this project because that's part of making a dynamic line drawing is having line variation. And you can definitely achieve that in Illustrator uh, pretty easily. Um, it's also, it's pretty awesome. So what I'm going to do now is, like I said, I'm going to go back to my layers, or I'm going to stay on my properties, that's fine with me, and I'm going to zoom in. So Z for zoom, click and drag, or click and just hold, and it'll go in. And also, too, remember if you hold the shift key, that hand pops up, and it'll allow you to navigate. So we're going to navigate around this. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start over here. Um, my pen tool is probably not what I'm going to use, and I'm going to zoom out just a little. I'm going to grab my pencil tool first. And knowing this is not about closed objects, what we're doing is you're learning how to trace. Um, I will show you how to take something like this um, when we get back and we finish this project, and how to use something called the Shape Builder tool, which if you have an object or if you've drawn two lines and they're intersecting and connecting, and you want them to be a closed object so you can fill them with color, then the Shape Builder tool will come in handy and I'll show you about that. But that is not what this project is about, so no worries with that right now. Um, obviously, you, you want your lines connecting and you can move them around with your, um, your direct selection tool as needed. So what I'm going to do is, let me zoom in a little. And I'm going to come over here and I have this on one point. I'm going to try to keep maybe a one point on the outside of this. And then as I do detail work on the inside, um, drop my line weight to something smaller and remember this is just illustrators default to this you can come in if you want something even smaller than that I can come in and actually put another zero in front of it and make this a tiny line so you have control over that so please keep that in mind as we go but I'm just going to start out with one around the edge grab my pencil tool which is in here it is and I'm using a little uh, bamboo little Wacom tablet um, you know, I don't even need my Cintiq for something like this. As I said uh, before, these things are very portable. They're great to have. Um, they allow you that feeling of drawing on paper, even so that if you don't like the surface of the Wacom, you can actually tape a piece of paper down to it and draw right on top of it. It really feels like you're drawing on the tooth of a paper. So whatever you want to do, but you are going to have a really hard time trying to use the pencil tool and working on a laptop or with a mouse. So this tablet will definitely help you through. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of start here and come through here up like this. And as you can see, I'm working my way around, making these great organic shapes. And I'm going to pick up over here. And that's the beauty of this. I'm going to kind of come through here and back around. And let me start back up in here. Remember, if it's selected, you can kind of change some of the things you were working on. I'm going to go ahead and bring that down. But then, oh, you know what? I'm not. I'm going to, let's start back in here and just work my way back up in here. And that way you can see that you can manipulate this as well. So continuing, this is with the pencil tool. I'm not using the pen tool right now. Um, this is in a very organic shape, so I don't need the strictness of the pen tool to create geometric shapes at this moment. I'm not quite happy with what happened there. And then I'm going to end it right into that anchor point. 
And so there we go. So we've got some kind of things I need to smooth out through here for certain. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go grab this smooth tool and it'll allow me, and what's ended up happening here is I can smooth out some of these anchor points. They got on top of one another, but you find this happening. What you can also do is delete an anchor point. And by deleting an anchor point, it's right here, or I hit the minus sign and it'll get rid of anchor points for me. Make sure you hit an anchor point. And I'm gonna grab my pencil tool again, pick up here and then in there. So that's how you can use the delete and anchor point. So if something like that kind of chaos happens. So now that I've showed you a little chaotic section, um, what I might do now is continue to kind of just smooth this out in that way. So if that happens to you, I wanted to make sure you had a, a little moment there to see that. Um, there's also something over here called the curvature tool. And what that allows you to do is come in and you can move an anchor point and curve it if you need to. So what's going to happen is it might affect another anchor point. So, but you can do this and come in as well and you can see how it shifts things around. I've added one there. So if I click somewhere where there isn't an anchor point, notice as soon as I hit the selection red line, that addition sign comes up, the add sign, that's exactly what it's going to do. It'll add anchor points for you and you can move it. And it's a wonderful, wonderful tool in terms of working with um, curves. So I'm going to zoom out a little. Um, use my hand, so hit the space bar. I'm going to work my way around. Now I'm going to come in over here, zoom back in by holding the Z. And then back to my pencil tool. And I'm going to just kind of go back in and draw in there if I need to. And like I said, smooth tools. So these are the tools that will help you walk through some of this. And then the curvature tool is right here. And then I'm going to bring this over and move it. And then if I hold the Alt key on this one, I can come in and move it and delete it. So I'm just working myself around. Um, let me go back to that one more time. And there we go. So I've got this. So now what's happened down here is, let me zoom back out. I mean, there we go. Move it around. Now this is a pretty uninteresting line to me. It's kind of clunky. It has no rhythm. It doesn't have any great movement. It certainly doesn't have the beauty of this McQueen dress. And so what I'm going to do is select it from a distance. I still might want to smooth a few things out over here. Now what I'm going to do, and I kind of want this, is I'm going to go over now that it's selected, and I'm going to go to my stroke panel. And at the very bottom, you see something here called profile, and it's about line width profiles. And so what you can do here now is change the line, making it a little more dynamic, um, you know, reading, like I said, with movement. And what I'm going to do is over here, you can flip it. So if you don't like it being heavy in one area, you can do it heavy in the other, flip it. I think I prefer it like this right now. Um, then what I'm going to do is now that this is thinner, I'm going to come back in and smooth some of this out with my smooth tool a little bit and then hit V and click off to the side. And now I have that first line and this is done with a pencil tool. Um, and this is a closed object as you can see, if I wanted to fill it with something, but I do not. So remember where this is all about just learning how to manipulate these tools. Um, the next thing you might want to do is you could come up here and do this, or you can work your way down over here. So coming back to the pencil tool, this unselected. Now I do not want this selected. Um, and then right up next to it, I'm going to start another series of this with the pencil tool. Sorry, I know while we're doing demos and I'm drawing, just kind of have to watch me draw a little, not a lot of talking. Um, and now if you take a look at this one, Z again to zoom in, use the space bar for the hand. This is a great one for the curvature tool. Um, and you can come in 
and soften some things, add one if you need to. And I'm just going to play around with the curvature tool just a little, so bear with me. And then if I take one and then slide it up into another one, then you see what's happened. It's straightened it, so and it can slide another one back out. So you can do that if you want to. So I might slide that one in there, bring this one up, add one in here, and so on and so on. And then I might grab the smooth tool a little bit in here. Just a little too much for me. So I'm just kind of do that. So you can work with both of them, curvature tool and the smooth tool, whichever one gets you uh, the end result that you want, honestly. And I'm going to pull this one down just a little and keep playing. And moving on that way. Now, I'm not wanting to continue a line or draw, but, you know, the computer will let you, if you want, you can carry it on and keep carrying on as you draw as well. Um, right now, I'm using it as a finessing tool, but not necessarily a drawing tool. So you'll see that at the bottom as you go. Um, so what I'm going to do is click back on this one. and click on this one, round it off a little. And so you get the idea. So I'm gonna hit V and it's selected. And now what I'm gonna do is go back to the stroke panel and maybe play around once again with some of the line width variations, line profiles. And let's see, I'm gonna go back on this one and let me flip it. Maybe I want something more like that. And if that's the case, I definitely want to soften this. I'm going to need to grab the curvature tool and move this one back in here, this one back out to reshape this a little, and so on and so on. And so this is, like I said, how you can kind of finesse these drawings if you would like. Move that one. Come up and do this. And now let me zoom out a little, and then let me hit V and click away so you can see kind of what's happening with that line drawing. So all of these delicate little lines through here, and as you come in and start working with the, um, the flowers and the appliques on this dress, I mean, this is where you're really going to start using really delicate, delicate lines as well. Um, so that's where, go to the pen tool so you can see it, this is where you're going to play around with strokes like 0.25. So let me do that one here. And I'm going to use the pen tool now and kind of just come in from here. I'm going to click, hold, and drag so I can round it off and remember. Now if I want to draw another line and I don't want it connected to this one and I want to stay in the pen tool, remember just hit enter on your keyboard. It separates you from that line, but it still keeps you in the pen tool so you're free to then start another one. And then I'm going to hit enter and then maybe go up here, return or enter, and click one there, click and hold and drag, enter. And then over here now I might want to use my pencil tool once, it's, once I see like a little more organic shapes going on here, not as straight, and not in this image so much, but if you do need to draw a straight line in Illustrator, what you can do is this. I'm going to hit my pen tool and I'll just do it over here for you. If I draw here and here, I'm kind of eyeballing it straight, you know, if you hold the shift key, notice that even if I am a little bit off, the computer is going to make it straight for me. So there is no way for you not to draw a straight line while you hold the shift key. And that works vertically as well, also to different angles. And I'm holding the shift key. Um, for the students that are working with the interior image, this might be a tool that you would use more than um, the students working with the uh, fashion image itself. 
But now what I want to do is, well, these are way too big in terms of the, let me just click on one so you can see on the uh, stroke size. This is where I'm going to select these and change the size. So what you can do is if you just, while you're in your selection tool, if you just run your selection tool, it just barely touches them. See how it selected those two? I'm going to run my selection tool to where it touches all those. Now be careful because it can, oh, my Mac's about to go out. So uh, let me pause just quickly and I'll come right back. I am going to uh, plug my computer in. So one second. Okay, so I'm back, <laughs> plugged in. Um, so what I can do is run this box and select all of those. And I carefully made sure the box kind of hit that. But if you accidentally hit this, it's going to select that as well. Um, so what you can do is, and let's zoom in. I'm going to go to V, which is my selection tool. Run it over these. This one still isn't selected, so hold the shift key and you can add that. Because if you want to, you can individually select. So you select something once, hold the shift key, and you can select. So maybe these four I want to select and I don't want the other ones. So you could do it that way as well. So you can click, hold the shift key, choose the ones you want, or while you're on or while you're in selection, run the selection kind of invisible little marquee there and they're all selected. So now that they're all selected, what I'm going to do number one is change it to a 0.25. Make these very tiny. Now what I want to do is come down here. I like using this width profile on this one, the one with the uh, sharp edge and the triangle. And what it does is it causes these to actually just finesse off on the end. So they just disappear at the end. So it's a nice beautiful wisp that you would find. Um, and so you can see now what's kind of happened. Now this one is different than this one because I drew this one from here to here and I drew this one starting here to here. So maybe this one I want to be like the rest of them. I just go over here and flip it. Come on, let me flip. There we go. I'm just going to change it to that profile. And so now we have that. So you have these beautiful delicate lines. And then when you do this too, zooming in, you're going to see that sometimes they get separated from where they were drawn originally because of the lines. So you can just use your selection tool and move it. But in this case, I want to use my direct selection because I want to keep this here. So I'm going to hit A, which is direct selection is the white arrow. I'm going to click on that anchor point and now I'm going to click on it and drag. And now I'm able to extend that line into this one. And when I hit V and click away, you'll see that it's connected into there. And so then I could continue to do this with my um, pencil tool. And once again, let's go here. Let's go to this. And then, all right. Now I'm going to go over here and draw another one. And so on. Let me try that with profile in there. Like I said, because it's a more a little bit more of an organic shape. If I want to, like I said, I can hit direct selection and just extend this a little. Also, too, don't forget, here's your curvature tool. So you can come in, click on these. And you can manipulate it that way if you wanted to as well. And so of doing this and then if you wanted to what we could also do is hit shift v or shift c which takes us to this anchor point tool and i know we used that a lot in the last one but don't forget about that one too that'll allow you to come in move that line but most importantly you can come in and play around with the handle so if i wanted this to go back up that way so it gives you that freedom also so these are the tools that you're going to be using for this assignment. So I'm going to hit Command-0 and then hit V and click away to get out of it. I'm going to go to my layers and kind of turn off my eyeball on my image so you can kind of see where you're going. So you're going to work your way around the dress. Like I said, if you need to, let's say, let me do it right here. Um, I'm going to draw a line. I'm going to grab my pen tool. I'm going to draw a line from here down to here move it and then change the line weight on it down to 0.25 
And then let me change my fit profile. Now remember, if you want to take a line and you want it to extend into an existing line right here, use direct selection, which is the white arrow, or the shortcut is A, click on it, and then take it and you can drag it and then bring it on up into that as well. Okay, and so you're going to work your way around with these different tools. Like I said, going back here, curvature tool. You can come in here. And play around with that, okay? And did not want to draw, so Command Z. I did not want to draw a line there. Back to V, go back to my smooth tool and maybe smooth that out a little as well. And curvature. I'm going to add one and then move it in. Then I'm going to click to add one, move it out, and click and add another one go through there, delete an anchor point. I'm just holding the minus sign and you can come through and delete them as well. You can do something like that. Come back curvature and maybe I want to add one and bring it up. Add another one here, bring it down. Up. Add one. Down, add one, maybe bring that up. You can work your way around that way. And then also, don't forget, hit in with your pencil tool and you can get back right into the line. Just hop into the line as it goes and then end back into it. And you can actually continue to change the shape on this. But so those are a few things that you would need to know to get this finished. So what you need to do is pay attention to the line weight and all the changes in the line weight so I can actually see dimension in this. This should not read all uniform, um, and you'll be using the tools in your property. Let me select it. That's here, changing these, and then as well as your stroke palette for changing these. And also too, what I wanna show you is I have my cap and my corner set on rounded, uh, meaning that I get a softer line. If you start drawing and you start shooting these shards, or you see these shards shooting out of your line, you know, like I said, we're not drawing um, boxes or frames or anything like that in this image. Um, it's a beautiful soft image with, you know, a lot of organic shapes taking place. So the first thing I would do um, is come in and when you hit your pen tool is to go to stroke and change your caps to round and your corners to round as well. And it'll make a big difference for you. So I'm going to hit B and hit B, go back to my selection tool and get out of there. So here is, like I said, a few ways that you can kind of get the achievement. It is about getting the look that you need and making certain there are really delicate lines and that there are strong, powerful, dynamic lines um, and also that they're appropriately placed. Okay, thanks. Bye.